Now we stopped on page, y'all help me here, because after listening to these preachers this week, and I'm going to mention some of the things they're doing and saying, and I, I was hoping I could remember the name of the man, he's in another country, and I heard Brother Hurry Green, you know, he's done passed away, but heard him talking about that fellow, talking about slapping thunders. And that man declared up and down that something outstanding happened there at his place of worship, and he got a big crack, and God gave him the seven thunders. Now I'm going to ask you, do you see anything wrong with that? To me, it's seven voices of seven thunders. Not one man with all seven thunders. Amen. And when the prophet said there will be seven voices of these thunders, and when I watch this, and see what so many of them are saying, did listen to groups, and I've done told you, you'd be surprised how many are out there, and I watch them, they're all preaching for one another. They're all supposed to be message believers. Every one of them is cutting Joseph down. Every one of them, some of the things they say about Brother Brown, it's, it's just hard to believe. And they're saying now, the prophet came to turn them back to the original, so they're in the Pentecostal age. Well, I got a message where the prophet said, if I come with a message of Pentecost, it wouldn't work. Amen. It's the bride age now. Amen. And when I hear all these people out here and see what they're doing and saying and listen to them close, and I said, Lord, I'm so glad you got us down in this world saying exactly what that prophet said. Nothing more, nothing less. Doing what he said was going to be done in this day. Amen. And how I thank God for that. I don't know about you. But I thank the Lord for it. Amen. And listen, over at the Pentecost, they were running across the platform and chapting and singing, saying they were getting drunk. And, like on the day of Pentecost. And so much of the word, they're denying it. Amen. So I have to get in the book and thank God. Somebody's saying, right, nothing wrong with chapter. But we're not in Pentecost. Amen. The prophet made that plain. Sure he come to turn us to the Word. And that's exactly where we're at. And the Word is God. Amen. And then they holler, well, I know why. If you mention a new name to them and hear them, and when they try to explain it away, some, they say, well, some people go around preaching that seven thunders are going to come and they're going to reveal a new name to the right. No, they're not saying that. Just prophet said that. Amen. Now, they believe what he said, and I quote them every day when I come out here. This is their words. God thought it. Brother Branham spoke it. That said it. But I, if I'm not mistaken, before they say it, they say, I believe it. That said it. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you believe it, then you wouldn't have all these different beliefs out here. Amen. Every one of them, if God thought it and that prophet spoke it, then he turned around and said, now you say what the tape says, say what the book says. Well, they're making fun of people that does that. They say some are saying, well, we got to say what he said and all this and try to explain it away. I don't know about you. I'm going to say with this. Amen. Let all the rest of them preach what they want to, believe what they want to. That prophet said, say what the book said, I'm going to say it. If he said seven thunders will reveal the new name, I'm going to hold on to it. Amen. And I know a lot of people said, well, you're hollering about a prophet in the land and just say, yes, I am, and I'll preach it until I leave here. Amen. But there's one thing I want people to get on mind. The prophet's talking about Joseph of the Old Testament. And he said, I want you to realize he played a trick on the people. He act like he didn't even know. Amen. Didn't even know what was going on. But he's looking right at them all the time. Amen. Amen. Now, there's nobody else going to come out and reveal that new name but seven thunders. And it ain't going to be one man sitting up here, I got the seven thunders. No, you're not. Seven voices of these thunders. 
will reveal that revelation at that time. Amen. Is that what you want? Amen. Amen. Is that what you want to hold on to? Amen. As I said the other night, and I'll keep saying it because people get so upset with me sometimes for what I say, for what I believe. If that prophet walked down this aisle, how would you treat him? Amen. What honor would you show him? Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. How pitiful it would be if we treated him like we do other people sometimes. Amen. It would be a shame. But I don't believe, if we believe him at all, that we could treat him with any disrespect. Amen. Amen. What about you? Do you believe that? Glory. Now, why would that be? Because what was in him? Let me ask you, what was in him? The Word. Amen. Now, these preachers out here preaching, oh, some of them claim that... Uh, when they seen Brother Brown, they seen God. Well, I got a book, and I think it's that's one of them laying right here. The prophet said, when some look, they just saw a man. But when others look, they saw God. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I look at this word, I see God. And when Amen. I see somebody that's got it, I still see God. Amen. Now, do you believe he become me? Amen. Flesh, that I might become him, the word? Amen. And when a fellow said one time, said, Brother Brown, they make you God. Try to make God out of, a God out of you. He said, is that so far wrong? Amen. You remember that? Amen. But now all these preachers out here, I can name some of them. I'm not afraid to do it. Donnie Reagan. I said I can name some of them. I, I get their names on. One name, Lamb. His last name is Lamb. Y'all may have heard of some of them. Well, I watched them. They had a big meeting all together. Coming to preach with one another. And they got big, fancy buildings. And as I said the other night, they'd be ashamed to come to a little place like this. If they don't have music all over the platform and people playing just a certain way or something, they can't have church. But God people don't care. Amen. Was that that problem? Amen. I told you before how when my dad, I said to somebody the other day, it may have been Brother Garvin. I can't remember who I was talking to. And I said, I think so many times how my dad started out. A tambourine. Amen. When he would go, and most of you here wouldn't know who I was talking about. Have you ever heard of Ole Reed from around Florida? He owned a big chicken farm. And he would come with a straight guitar, get up there, and start. He led the service for my dad the whole time. It didn't matter if it was heel or whip or war, he, he would drive through it, open the service, play a straight guitar, and my dad that tambourine. Then finally, we got a piano. Every now and then, and that thing, how many know what these big pianos feel like, how heavy they are? You try to lift one up. And we get that thing, we wouldn't put it up on the platform and sat down the shavings. But Mercy Lou started playing it. And she would play that when we were able to get it in the tent. And I'd watch these other preachers like Ernest Marcher, H. Richard Hall, all of the big Hammond organs, all the music. And they'd go in and set it up and they thought, boy, we, and, and one time they ended up in Galax together, my dad and Ernest Marcher. And he thought he was just going to take everything that was there, my dad wasn't going to have it, and my dad's tent packed out. And he didn't hardly have anybody until my dad closed his revival down and moved. That was in Galax. It wasn't that he wouldn't want the music. If it had been there, he loved it. Because I could not play at all then. And it was years, and I was telling who, who was it? Somebody here that I was talking to. May have been somebody at the house. But I remember you, I think it was. I said, I remember the very first place we had the tent set when he got old organ. It wasn't a big hammer, wasn't even a Leslie speaker to go with. It was a little Lowry organ. And boy, did that thing sound good. There's a woman that would come every now and then named Sue Shepherd. She would get on, she couldn't play it all that good. They come down here some after we open services here. And she would play. And she could play music, but to make an organ roll, she just couldn't do it. But it sounded so good to pull up in that field, me just a boy in the back seat of the car, to hear that organ go. And I thought, how pretty that is. 
But he was satisfied and God just kept blessing him. Kept blessing him. Then I got on the organ and like a going crazy. I'm going to learn to play. Between revivals, he said it in the house, in the living room. And we lived in town. Neighbors around and I jarred walls. And one day, in a service, I didn't know regular chords. I played all chords. Just the sound I picked up. I'd get on it and play until about time for service start. And I'd jump off and run back and get in the seat. I said, nobody will be able to sing with me doing that. My dad stepped out on the platform that night, looked back there, and, and it ain't like kids today. You didn't tell my dad, no, I'm not. When he said sing, it didn't matter how much you didn't want to do it, you're going to do it. He said, he'll come get on the organ. I looked at him. He said, no, get on the organ. <laughs> you might as well have smacked me. I went up there. Somebody got up singing. First of all, he was in all cold. They looked at me like, what are you doing? I said, that's what you guys singing. That's all I know. <laughs> and so, when we opened up here, I was still playing in all corners. Then the woman that was playing, she had taught music. The Sioux Shepherd I was talking about. Come down here, and I was playing one night. After service was over, she come out and talk to me. She said, how in the world do you play like that? I would give anything. I thought, Boy, that's something coming from somebody that's taught music. But I didn't know much about it, but I knew how to play it up to get by. And it made my daddy happy and made some of you happy because you shouted all over the building with me. <laughs> you may have shouted so you couldn't hear the organ. I don't know. But how many times did I sit here and play and people come in that took lessons and say, I don't see how you do it. Why do you play by? I said, just by saying and when my dad would get up here and say, hit, what was them all chords he called sometimes? It wasn't a chord. He'd say, hit that, and I'd just hit it. <laughs> He'd take off, and I'd have to go all over that organ. I'll finally find him somewhere and turn loose. But I watch how God has blessed over the years. Amen. And look at the music he put up here for us. Amen. All of us. And I won't. I remember Brother Brown said, I won't. Rebecca on either the piano or the organ, and the other one, I won't name on that. But mine has not got that far along to even. But we do need somebody when the regular players are not here. And if Billy was here tonight, I would have had him up here on this organ. Not the organ, but the piano. And if I can work with Mark, he's tall. He can look him over the work and see everybody, and everybody can see him. And I'd just like to work with him a little bit. He might be teaching me for it, so I don't know. But where some of the players have to miss so much, it'd be good to have somebody to fill in. And if anybody here thinks you can play, just let me know. Say, could you sing with it? I can sing with anything. I can sing with a bucket. You don't believe it, be around the house sometimes when I'm in there and going with the song. But we got so much to thank God for. Amen. And I mentioned it the other night. I wonder when I watched them preachers, the big fancy buildings, all the music they got. If we would invite them here, would they be ashamed? And I'll promise you they would be ashamed to even walk in this little building. Amen. Don't you think that's getting on up from where the prophet was at? Amen. Amen. He would walk in here and never have a problem with it. That's right. But how many that claim to be following the message would not do it? They'd be ashamed to be caught. Some of your kin folks would be ashamed to come here. Amen. But don't ever be ashamed. What about the brush harvest they used to preach in? What about the old tent services, raggedy, put together with hall greens, where the storms would tear them up? Staple them back together and get out and have service. Oh, how I thank God for them days. But without them days, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Amen. And when we get into this and think of where I think about it, where I come from, how He put me up here, and how I believe with all my heart we have a word. Amen. And the more I read and think about it, 
we know there's going to be a showdown. Amen. And you don't want to think about it, but I believe the showdown is going to be more of the people that's got this much of the word, that much of the prophet's message, that much and that much. And I believe God's going to show where the real truth is at. Amen. And it's going to be on dust of the Lord by that prophet and nobody had to do it or take it away from it. Amen. Glory. When he said thunders are going to do this, the thunders are going to do it. When he said they'll reveal that new name, let every man's word be alive and let this be the truth. Amen. Amen. And when he said we're not, well, his words, I cannot come with the Pentecost, the message of Pentecost in this day because it will not work. Amen. So what hour we're living in, when I watch all that, and they're out there by the thousands, come over in other countries, and they come here and preach, they go there and preach. I didn't realize there's that much going on out there. But then, to hear them get up there and down the Brynham family like they do. And talk about the prophet's son the way they do. Oh, Brynham question, no more this lesson. What kind of attitude is that to stand up there in the pulpit and try to preach to the people? Amen. Something's wrong somewhere or another. But I believe God's got somebody, whether we believe it or whether we don't, that's standing directly on that word and we're behind them 100%. Now, I want to start on page 87. Wait till we get over there that one half hour that is silent. The sanctuary is smoking. There's no more intercession. The sacrifice has left. It's a judgment seat. Amen. Say, when will that be? Now, I'm going to turn their messages up. I've been listening to it. It's already done. Amen. That's right. There is no more blood on it, no more. For the blood-covered lamb has walked away. Don't you wait till that time. Remember in the Old Testament, as long as the blood was off the mercy seat, it was a judgment seat. Amen. Now, but as long as the blood was on there, there was mercy. Amen. Now down at the bottom, here comes the Lamb. His intercessory days is over. That's when this angel is going to stand there. You wait till we get in these seals and time shall be no more. That half hour of silence. Watch what takes place in that half hour of silence. When that seventh seal next Sunday night, the Lord will. Now I'm going to ask you, did he open that seven seal? Do you believe when that went open, it was over? Do you believe the Lamb left the mercy seat? Do you believe he's been walking forth opening these seals? Amen. Then after he got to that last one, he was not a lamb any longer, Amen. but he become the lion of the tribe of Judah. Do you believe that? Amen. Now somebody's got that message. Amen. And I don't care how much they holler, we're having Pentecost revival now. We're getting drunk like they did on the day of Pentecost. And that's all right. If you want to get drunk, get drunk. Yeah. On the Spirit. Nothing wrong with it. But don't holler. The prophet turned us back to that. He turned our hearts back to the original Word of God. And the world just don't have it. Amen. Denominations kept getting away from it. So, don't tell me they're hollering. We got Pentecost. I listened to it. Denominational preaching. Oh, this is the day of Pentecost. Well, that's the same thing the believers are hollering now. They're up there claiming to be speaking in tongues, shouting and running the aisles. So, that's not it. But you put the message in there among every one of them, and they're dead. It'll kill them. Amen. So, what do we want? I believe, I believe with all my heart, the bride is going to have a revival. Amen. Glory. Amen. Because the words unsaid they was going to. What is reviving? Reviving the ones you got, not adding to it. Amen. You cannot add to the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet on me. Everyone's name that was in the book was put down before the foundation of the world. Amen. So you'll never add another name to it. Amen. All right, it's in close. Now, the kinsman work on page 88 of redemption. He had not yet called for his claims. He comes on the scene to claim his rights. Is that what he has done? Now, but the elder was right when he said he was alive. The elder called him alive because he had been a lamb, an intercessor, a bloody lamb, 
But now he's coming forth as the lion. His days of intercession is over. Amen. Did you believe when the seals come open? And I'll read it right over here in a few minutes. So don't take my word for it. When that seal was open, time ran out. Amen. Think about it. Silence hit the earth. Amen. What in? Not in denomination. They're still blabbing. Where was the silence at? In the world. Amen. But how many believe that silence has to break? Amen. And when it does, I believe with all my heart, here comes your seven thunders. And they'll preach what's already been put right here in this book. Amen. Now, remember, it comes at the seventh church age. Now, I'm not reading all the paragraphs. He had been doing his meditorial work, making intercession for the believers for 2,000 years. He had been back there, a lamb. But now he stepped aboard from eternity to take the title deeded book Break the seals and reveal the mysteries. I'm going to ask you, who revealed that mystery? Did that prophet do it? Amen. Didn't the lamb have to be done walked out? Amen. Now, if you don't think this was going to bother them, I know what they're preaching out here. I know what they believe. And they say they believe in the prophet. But time run out whether they want to accept it or not. Amen. And they may be hollering, oh, we're getting more saved, more saved. No, you're not getting anybody saved. Amen. They were already in, and God just here now claiming what He already has. Amen. Do you believe you're one of them? Amen. Amen. Lord, and we're one. Are we different than the rest of the world? Amen. Now, He breaks the seals. Wait a minute, I don't want to miss nothing here. He had been back there, and He stepped aboard from eternity to take the title deeded book. Break the seals, reveal the mystery. When of it? At the end time. Are they revealed? Amen. Then he's not back there anymore. Now he'll break the seals, release all the mysteries to the seventh angel. Is that where you're bright? Whose message is to reveal all the mysteries of God. And the mysteries of God lays in these seven seals. What he said here, all the mysteries lays in them seals. And the Lamb come forth from being a mediator between God and man. No other mediator, no other nothing. I don't care what it is. There's only one way you ever got in. Amen. Glory. God become a Lamb. Amen. A Redeemer to pay for every mistake I'd ever made. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He didn't Hang on the cross and say, I'm going to stop you from doing these things. He said, I know you're going to make mistakes, but I'm going to cover them up for you. Amen. I'm going to take them away for you. Thank you Don't you thank God for that? Amen. Now, how many weeks he's already left that area there? He's not on the mercy seat no more. Amen. So what's he doing? How will you know that blood covered you? He's here revealing himself now as your Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Not your Savior now. He's already done that. Amen. But he's here showing you, I'm your Redeemer, but here's the book of it. The book of what? Of redemption. Amen. Now, the mediator between God and man, he becomes a lion, and when he becomes a lion, he takes the book. That's his rights. God has held it. The mystery. But now the Lamb comes. Nobody could take the book. It's still in the hands of God. No Pope, no priest, whatever it might be. They can't take it. The book, the seven seal, hasn't been revealed. But when the mediator, when his work is done as an intercessor, he comes forth, the elder said, he's a lion. And he comes forth, watch him, oh my. He comes forth to take the book. Now watch. To reveal the mysteries of God that others had guessed at in all these denominational ages. Amen. Who revealed that mystery? That prophet did. Amen. The Lamb. The Spirit. Meek. Gentle. That's what he's talking about. Amen. But Lord. still here at that time. Amen. But how many believe at the end when all this is taking place, God got a hold of that prophet and shook the earth and he said, Judgment is striking the West Coast. Amen. Amen. Judgment is hitting the earth. Amen. What is it? Not a lamb any longer. 
the judgments of God. And I know I put some things up, but I'd like to put here right now, if I did put them in here, to just show you what a scary time. And you may get mad at the preacher sometimes for preaching, but I want to show you what a scary time we're living in. And one day you're going to say, boy, I'm so glad I'll listen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This dust storm, cloud they call it, that's heading, they had in the paper this week, to Virginia. 50 years since something like that happened. Think back 50 years ago. Then in Mexico, a 7.4 earthquake hit this week, the first of the week. First it was two dead, now it's up to six. They just keep finding people. Buildings flattened. Roads tore up. 7.4 is a big one. There's the judgments of God still hitting. Amen. A woman found dead in her home down here in Pennsylvania County. Not far from here. Domestic violence. Shot, the man shot the woman and the children were running. The devil is loose. Amen. The powers are riding. Amen. And I have said it before and I'll say it again. When men and women don't get along, separate. Amen. But what does a man do? If they love the woman, the prophet says, you go leave them alone. If you can't live with them, you don't trust them. Amen. Leave them alone. But what did they do? Try to beat them up or kill them more. That's not love. Amen. Amen. Glory. Think about these things, Pete. That spirit is riding out here. Amen. Now in Rono, a woman working with a realty company. How I many saw that? Met a man to take him in and show him the house. He attacked her while he was there. I think she's in pretty bad shape. They arrested him. Who would ever thought he was getting her to come there for that? You're not safe anywhere. I'm going to tell you people right now. Amen. You get in the car right now and drive down to the Walmart or something, the way things are in the news and everybody's looking at it, they could be sitting in the parking lot just because they don't like you or want to do something to get on TV and just start shooting at you. Amen. Amen. That's why you better make sure you're right with God. Amen. Do things that please Him. Amen. Then, this blood in Siberia. Houseboats, big ones, look like house trailers sitting on the water. And the water got so high and the river rolling so fast. It was hitting the bridges and just flattening them out. People been run out of the homes, the flooding that's going on. Then in Phoenix, these new fires that just popped up after all the ones they've just had. Over 200 people put out of their homes right now because of that. Then in another place, where was it? Was it uh, I forget what state it was in. It might have been Texas. They said they couldn't call it a... I forget what they call it now. I said it may not be a, a hurricane, but a, it may not be a tornado, a straight wind or something. Just ripped the tops off of buildings. Destroying things that people have worked for. Then they'll go to another place, another state. Look at the flood going on here. Cars floating down, down the river. The judgments of God are all over the earth. And this is the devil. He's got people out here in the streets protesting. Don't even want to approach that start protesting over. Turn things up. That has nothing in the world to do with them to start with. It's the devil riding, and I'm going to promise you this, it's not going to get any better. Amen. And when we hear this word, if it makes you mad, if it turns you up, you better get right with God and line up with it. Amen. You can run into anything out here on your job. In town, in the stores, because they're sitting around now. You see it all over Martinsville. People of different color against one another. It's unbelievable. Amen. When it shouldn't even be. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. God loves all people. Of all colors. So, what is it? Nothing but the devil that is ruling this world that we live in right now. And every word you look, here they are shooting fireworks off in every state around just about. And hitting little kids. Why can't somebody do something about it? 
why can't somebody stop them? It's not just out there now, people. When I preach for years, it'll be right in here. Amen. Are you watching the news? Are you reading your paper Amen. to see what's going on here? Amen. People that don't like you on your job, they'll just start now. Because whether you realize it or not, in Russia from one place, they banned the message of the prophet. Don't want it there. Because it's, again, so many different things that people do. It's not just going to be there. This message is going to take everything on the face of this earth off here before long. That ain't Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Because they get so mad at it. Amen. They want to come again. But I believe the word here, and it's already written here what's going to happen. And whether we realize it or not, seven thunders are here that's going to meet that head on out here. Amen. And they're not out here criticizing one another. They got the word and just march it right on with it. But the prophet said there's also a group that's following them on white horses also. Amen. Glory. And whether we realize it or not, they got to meet one another on the battleground. Amen. Glory. And I just sit now and say, Lord, I know I'm nothing. When I'm not in this world, when I'm not here preaching, when I'm out in the yard, I'm a mean little rascal. When I'm at the beach, I'm a mean little fellow. Not really. But when I get in the Word, I'm a different man completely. Amen. And when I'm sitting and studying, you don't want to try to bother me too much. Because if I'm right into that, you might get a sharp answer real quick. Because I am going to put Him first. And when He's really showing me something in there, I don't want something getting my attention from Amen. Amen. But he watches over me. Amen. He knew that with Gallimore what he was before he ever called me. That's right. And whether we realize it or not, if you would just watch some of the preachers that I'm not, which I know you can't hardly stand it, it's hard for me to do it, and that's my job. But when you watch some of them, you have to stop and thank God for what we've got right here. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. What do we got? I believe the real, true, living word for this day we're living in. Right? Amen. Right. Glory. Now listen close. But when the mediator, is that more mad? Are y'all keeping up with me? But when the mediator, his work is done, as an intercessor, he comes forward, the elder said he's alive. Watch, to take the book, to reveal the mysteries others have guessed that. Is that William Brown we're talking about? That did that? Amen. Then he's not on the mercy seat anymore. Now I'm going to quote something because I've been getting to it here in a little bit and I want that on your mind. On page 99, and we're getting up close to it, the prophet said, the first thing to represent your redemption, come to Lamb. Now listen close. He walked out. Rip the seals open. Send them down to the earth. Where did he walk from? He walked out from the mercy seat. Amen. Rip the seals open. Send them down to the earth. To his seventh angel messenger, which was William Murray and Brown. Amen. To give it to his people. Amen. Glory. What was them seals? Right here they are. What is it? A book of redemption. What's the first thing to represent your redemption? The Lamb walked out. Send it down to the earth. And right here it is. This is the book of redemption. Amen. Let me scream. This is the Lamb's book of life. Amen. That all of them out here heart. I want my name in that book. Well, here's the book. Amen. Amen. I don't hear them preaching that out here. Amen. But it's got to go out. He's not on the mercy seat. This is the book. Amen. And if your name is here, you don't have any problem believing everything that prophet said. Amen. And if you've got a man of God standing in front of you, he don't run off in the corner, get his hands up right and explain him what he said. He'll open them up and give you word for word what that prophet's on here. Too many out here now writing their own opinion. Well, this is what he meant about marriage and divorce. He meant exactly what he said. Amen. This is what he meant in the breach and in the seal. He meant exactly what he said. Amen. And when you see these fellows writing their books, saying, I'm going to explain what he said. 
don't have anything to do with it. Amen. If you want what the prophet said, it's on the table. Amen. It's in the book. Amen. And if you don't think he said there'd be seven thunders here, open the book and read it. Amen. Turn the tape on and listen to it. And if you're going to listen to it, why don't we believe it? Amen. Why don't we know it's going to do what it said it would do? Amen. Now, let me get that down here. So when, then the seventh angel, if this book, the mysteries, is the word of God, then the seventh angel has to be a prophet for the word of God to come to. Lord. No other way can God get his word here other than a prophet. Now, on page 89, restore the faith of the children back to the fathers. Then the world judgment would strike. The earth would be burnt. Then the righteous would walk out upon the ashes of the wicked in the millennium. Amen. Glory. How close are we? Do you believe we're going to burn this place up? Amen. Come on tonight. Turn the news on. If you can stand to watch the news a little bit instead of some of the junk we watch. Watch the news a little bit and see what a shape this world is in. Amen. It's almost unbelievable what a world we live in right now. Amen. When you realize how bad it is, you wonder, it has to be God watching over me Amen. for me to make it through to the next day. Amen. Thank you. That's the kind of world we're living in. But didn't our prophet say you got some of the worst times that this world has ever been through laid right in front of you. I believe him when he said that. Amen. The waves are going to get high. That means scary. Lord. But he'll carry us over top of everyone. Amen. Lord. Who's going to do it? Him. What is he? He's the word. Now, about the middle of the page. Now watch, then it is he, the lamb, that takes his kingly position when his saints come to crown him Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Time has run out. Revelations 10 and 6, there's no more time. Notice, I believe I had that wrote down somewhere to break the seals, to loose the title deed, the title deed and the message to the last angel. Was that William Murray Brown? Amen. And he takes his kingly place. That's what he comes forth now to do. Did I just quote to you, and we'll read it. The first thing to represent your redemption. The lamb walked out. Rip the seal open, sent them down to the earth to the seventh angel messenger Lord. to give them to the people. Remember, the lamb paid this price. He didn't get this, the book of redemption for him. He didn't need it. Amen. Amen. He breaks the seal, not to him, but to the bride. Amen. Amen. Then when the seals are open, let me quote the prophet, the book is sealed and you're sealed with the book. Then when this book is revealed, you're revealed with the book. Amen. When this message comes out, you're not arguing with it. When he said seven thunders will do this, you're right there with him. Amen. Amen. When he said they'll give the bride that new name, you're right there with him. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you. Why? Your name's in that book. Amen. They're not grabbing a pen, and I'll say it again, preachers. They're not grabbing a pen and right now saying, this is what it meant here. Open the book and say what he said right there. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you. Why did they do that? They're going to change a little something. Amen. They didn't like what he does. Like on marriage and divorce. Well, he meant this and meant that. He meant exactly what he said. Amen. And somebody is standing on it. And sure as I'm standing here, they're going to meet out here on the battleground. Amen. And the only ones that's going to be left standing is the ones that have their name in this book right here. Amen. Amen. Lord. Now, what are you doing about it when you hear it? Do Lord. you accept it and walk with it? Do you listen to any other preachers here say something other than this right here? What about marriage and divorce? Amen. Look how many have tried to do away with it. Try to twist it around. Write your own book. 
I'm going to tell you preachers looking right into this camera. When you have to write a book to explain what that prophet said, you don't believe what he said. I know that ain't going to go over here. But you don't believe it. Open the book. Listen to the tape and say what he said. Then it'll stop all this backbiting out here and turn on and act in the way they do. Glory. The prophet said there's too many following this message. Something has to cause them to step aside. Amen. I believe marriage and divorce will do it to more of them than anything you have to. Amen. Amen. Glory. I believe these seven thunders have put more of them away. But somebody, and according to the fourth seal, the prophet said, they know. Now listen to this. They know. Who's he talking about? The bride. Because he said they're marching right along with the world. They know these thunders will issue this pretty soon. Amen. Glory. It may just be a handful, but I want to be part of that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Glory. Somebody knows, and I say no, there can't be no thunders. Somebody knows these thunders are going to do something. Amen. Right. It's already written right here. God thought it. Brother Brian spoke it. That settles it. Whether you believe it or not, Amen. it's already settled. Amen. Glory. Now, let me see. Turn over. I believe I read that one there. Turn over to page 90. Now, let's go to 93. Down at the bottom. But now, he comes forth. Now, let me back up one. With the Lamb, with the book in His hands, we are ready to ask His grace and mercy upon us. To open the seven seal book, let us look past the curtain of time just a little bit. Oh my. When He took the book, the title deed, seal, just get that in your mind now. Broke the seals of the mystery to reveal them, to bring them to His. All of his redeemed subjects. Is this the seals? Amen. Glory. Are you his subjects? Amen. Is he revealing it to you tonight? Amen. Thank you. All over this audience. Amen. But now he comes from here at this last seal. He is no more mediator. Amen. He is king now. Amen. Don't miss these words. And what does he do? If he's king, he has to have subjects. His subjects is them that he has redeemed. And they cannot come before him until he takes his rights of redemption. And now he walks forth from a mediator where death put us in the grave. He comes forth with the rights. Amen. Glory. Amen. Praise God. Did the Bible tell us, and we'll be reading it right here, when he comes, we'll crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Glory. How are we going to do that? Do you think all of us are going to have a crown running up, put it on his head? No. He's already here. The seven seal is open. He's already, we read it right here. He become the king right there. And it'll be his saints that crown him King of Kings Amen. and Lord. Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Are you part of His saints? Amen. Lord. Do you belong to Him? Amen. Do you see how simple this is? That's right. And the educated out here are missing it. Amen. And God's got somebody like Hollywood wears a suit. And everyone that you see you got the big three-piece suits and the vests and all hanging around and running to Hollywood and Pentecost. They may be in Pentecost. But I'm not in no Pentecostal age. Amen. Glory. What are they holler? Well, they should dress different, do this and that and the other. The prophet said, I'll quote him and read it if I have to. People think so. The preacher has to do this and do this and dress a certain way or something. He said, Oh, mercy, goodness, no. Amen. Glory. If you're a child of God, I don't care if you just got rags on. Amen. God will use you. Amen. Amen. But I believe the believers are getting back to work. Most denominations are. Up in the air. Don't want to believe the world.
Word. Amen. Bless it, Lord. Glory, man. I believe they're fixing to meet the Word head on. Amen. If all that belief is out here, something's got to be wrong, but there's always one right somewhere. Amen. Amen. So you're claiming you're right. No, I'm claiming the Word is right. Amen. Amen. Glory. But when they have to get up and explain this away, tell everybody, I've got a book out now explaining this verse seal. Throw it in the trash. Burn it out. Amen. Amen. You don't need it. Amen. What do you need? You need this right here. Amen. Amen. Glory. That's all you need. Get a tape and listen to it. That's all we need. Amen. Glory. Say now, if we listen to the tapes, is that good enough? I believe the prophet said there'd be seven thunders here. Amen. Amen. And I believe now a lot of people said, well, he didn't know. How many times did he say I stood right there and looked straight at it? I know what it is. He said, you know I know what it is. How many believe he said? Amen. Glory. And that's why right there in questions and answers. He told every one of them. He said, I know what it is, but you didn't get it. And I'm gonna he said, probably hurt your feelings, but you weren't even supposed to get it. That's right. Amen. Wonder why? It had to come God's way. Amen. And what did he say there at the end? What this mystery is right here, I do not know. Listen to how he said, I could not make it out. I saw it run across me there, but I couldn't interpret it. But I know them seven thunders have that. Amen. Amen. That's right. Glory. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that was God spoke through that prophet that said that? Amen. And if you don't believe it, you're not a believer. Amen. That's right. But if you're a believer, you know he said seven thunders hold something. Amen. How many know what holding something is? Amen. They're holding it. Why? Silence hit when that seven seal come over. Amen. But God will get a hold of them. And one place the prophet said them thunders will be known by the real true bride. Amen. Only the real true bride. There will only be a handful that will listen to what they're saying. Amen. Now, on page 95, he come to get his subjects. He revealed his secrets. They saw it. Time is no more. At that time, time had run out. It's finished. He leaves the throne to be an intercessor as a slain man, to be a lion king, to bring the world to judgment who has rejected his message. He's not a mediator. Is everything I'm reading you here already happened? Amen. Amen. In what hour are we living in now? That's why you see so much confusion out here. And that's why the prophet said, don't go out and try to interpret this. Just wait on God. And if He Amen. wants you to have it, He'll send it to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Did you believe Him? Amen. When the Lamb slain walked forward from eternity out of the Father's throne, took His rights, it was a judgment seat. Then He become not a Lamb, but a Lion King, and He called us clean. Come and stand by me. It tired so many people up. But I quoted something a while ago and I hope you got it. You have to hear it. It wasn't, the prophet said it wasn't written in the Bible that I was going to have this little boy and I would call his name Joseph. And don't you think these so-called believing preachers out right here don't rub that in the ground. I can't find it in my Bible. The prophet said it wasn't written in the Bible. Amen. But you believe him to be a prophet, then you know the word comes to the prophet. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, how many times do we say in this book right here, it was not written in the Bible what them thunders said. Amen. Amen. Right. Really? Amen. And I told you just a little while ago, Back then, the prophet said, there was Joseph looking right at them people. And he acted like he didn't know them at all. Amen. Amen. But the whole time, they're looking straight at them. Amen. 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 What's the rest of the believers, or so-called believers out here doing? 
calling that man everything but a child of God. But I'm going to tell you what I know he is. He's a prophet. How do you know? God thought it. Brother Brown spoke it. That's that one. I don't care what the rest of them say. He is a prophet. And God does not send a prophet in vain. He revealed himself as son of God in the church ages. Son of man to William Murray Brown. Now he revealed himself as son of God. For the millennia. Amen. And he'll be right there with his bride for a thousand years. Amen. No more sickness, no more heartaches, no more Amen. Lord, thank you. Do you want to be part of that bride that I'm talking about? Amen. If you've got the word, I'm standing there tonight. Oh, what I'm looking at standing here. You're standing there fearless because you know he's on your side. Amen. And it don't matter who comes and stands in front of you, who tries to say you. You're doing this, that, that, no, it's already written right here. Amen. Glory. Now, 99. Talk about a jubilee. Talk about a time when that lamb walked forth. The book is even sealed in heaven. The mysteries are. Say, is my name there? I don't know. I hope it is. But if it is, it was put on there before the foundation of the world. But the first thing that represented that redemption come the Lamb that had been slain from the foundation of the world. He took the book, glory, opened the book, tore off the seals, sent it down to the earth to his seventh angel. Seventh angel. To reveal it to his people. Amen. Lord, do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Lord. Now, how can you believe the Lamb's still there? On the mercy seat. He had to walk away. Amen. And when he walked away, this is what he walked out with. Amen. Amen. And I was in him all the time. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you. My name was in that book before I was ever born. It's in there before the foundation Amen. of the world. And it's just now coming to show us. Our name is in there. Amen. Amen. Now, just to make it a little plainer, before I go to the next page here, well, I have to get the other part of the book. And I'm not going to hold it just a few minutes longer here. I'm watching that clock. Turn to the back. I believe it's in questions and answers. I did have the uh, page written down here. Page 423. You believe the prophet? Is it true that every Jew born since Christ that came into the world is to be saved? No. Nothing will be saved. Only those whose names were put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Jew or Gentile. That's all. The book holds the mystery. And the book is only unfolding it now. Not each one's name, but what the mystery of the book is while it's calling those names. He said, do you finally understand that? Glory. The book doesn't say, now Levi is to be saved in the time of this age, or Armor Neville, or whoever. It don't say that. It just shows the mystery. I'm bold the mystery of what the thing is. But we ourselves by faith believe it. Amen. Lord. Now what's he saying right there? My name, Edward Gallimore, is not written out like that in this book. But the mysteries are there. This book was sealed and I was sealed with that book. Amen. Lord. Then when this book is revealed, if I can see every mystery that prophet put here, then my name was in the book. Amen. Amen. But when I look in here and say, well, he said this, so I better write a book and explain it, then my name ain't in that book. Because I'm not believing what he said. i got to write and try to explain what he said. Amen. Are they doing the same? I've got books, papers of preachers that say they're in the message. Writing, explaining what the prophet said in marriage and divorce. I'm holding the books for proof. 
If they ever say I didn't do it, I got to prove it myself. Glory. I don't need nobody to write a book and tell me that. I've got the marriage and divorce book. I open it and read it and say what he said. That's all I have to do. Amen. Amen. That's right. And if I got every preacher that's out here that's hollering and turning on and acting the way they do to say they believe, to stand beside me, open that book, and just let them let me read a paragraph and them read one, let the next one read one, they'll say the first same thing you say right here. Amen. Glory. But I don't think they could do it. I'd read it. And just stop and say, there it is. They'd read it and say, but this is what he meant. No, he meant what he said. Yeah. Then another one read, well, I think he meant this. They're wrong. Amen. Glory. Amen. 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 Don't have anything to do with it. Amen. Amen. Right. This is the word right here. And God has put somebody, it'd be somebody so simple the world look at and say, he can't use that. Amen. How in the world can he use something like that? Look how they dress. The prophet said, you take the way the man dresses and the way he acts and things, and some will look and say, no, I ain't listening to that. But there's some sitting there for years old. Amen. Amen. They say, wait a minute. He's on it. Amen. He's right. got it. Amen. He's right double with what that prophet said. Amen. I'm not leaving it. Amen. Glory. And I hope there's some sitting in this audience. Amen. I'm not saying don't leave me. Don't you leave this right here. Amen. Amen. Glory. And if you believe this, you'll have to believe what I'm telling you. Or either, and the preacher's out there, bring this message. Do not bring your trashy papers you're writing. Amen. Bring this message to Brother Gallimore and sit down and show me what I'm saying wrong right here. I've had that thrown in my face. I've challenged them to get the books, marriage and divorce and all. Amen. They couldn't do it. Amen. When somebody, and I can't help who it is, if they're listening, they know who I'm talking about. But when somebody tells me, Brother Gallimore, it's in there, poor Brother Brown said polygamy was wrong. I said, get the book. I don't have time. Ain't that pitiful? Amen. Ain't that a shame? Amen. Why didn't they get the book? They know it was not there. Amen. And I'm going to look in this camera. When you say things like that, you're saying a lie about the message. Amen. Because it's not in there, not in one place. Where that prophet said, believe me, we're wrong, and I can't help it who you are. Amen. Amen. It's just saying the Lord all the way through, not just saying where you're right. And what people don't get. It's just like it was in the days of Moses. The Father said God took Moses on the mountain. And when he come back, the people noticed he'd been changed. His message was different. He acted different. Why? He had seen the bell of and now he walked into it. And when he come back out, he's the living word. Walking right here on earth. And it's happened in this day. And they have missed it. They have to realize that was not just a man talking. That was that prophet with, just said the Lord, and I'll vote him again. God thought it. That prophet spoke it. And if you don't believe it, you're not a believer. Amen. Amen. If you have to argue with it, you're not a believer. Amen. If you have to make excuses about it, you're not a believer. Amen. But somebody takes it and looks in here. He said it. God thought it. That settles it. And I'm going to hold to that message. Over the land just beyond the river.